The flavor comes from cooking the meat on the bone. The bone? Where did the bone go? Winston! Oh my gosh! Today I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite dishes. A cowboy steak with wilted Brussels sprouts and bacon and a little chimichurri sauce over the top. Now, a cowboy steak is just a, a large, a, a very large bone-in ribeye. It's got a gorgeous spinalis around the edge of it. Spinalis is this ribeye cap and it's the most tender part of the whole ribeye, in my opinion. But the cowboy steak is called a cowboy steak because of the little handle on the end. The bone, it's been trimmed down so that you can pick it up and hold it. It's almost like a ping pong bat or a, a big ping pong bat. Out on the prairie, the cowboys don't have knives and forks. So once they're grilling the steaks, they can just pick those steaks up and chomp away at them. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but it may just be made up, you know, to, to sort of romanticize the steak, a, a big marketing ploy, something like that. But what I do know is it's a fantastic steak. And when you buy them, you just need to season them well and cook them well too. And they're incredible. To season it, I'm starting off with some of my mixed seasoning. And I use a mixture of salt and pepper and... Uh, mustard, rosemary, and lots of other goodies in there too. And I give the steak a nice sprinkling of this seasoning. The great thing about a ribeye is that marbling in there, all that sort of little bits of fat, that's called the marbling and that's where all the flavor comes from. One of the secrets to cooking a good ribeye is taking it out of the refrigerator and bringing it to room temperature for about 45 minutes to an hour uh, before you actually cook it. We don't want to pull it out of the fridge and put it straight on the grill because the meat's going to be really cold inside and it'll be tight and tough and it's not, it's not good. There are many different ways of cooking the ribeye. You can cook it on the grill, get it nice and hot, a good sear and then reduce the heat. And you're going to cook it for about 15 to 18 minutes. This ribeye is about two, two and a half inches thick and it'll take that long to cook. You can cook it on the stove, get a really, really hot skillet, uh, cast iron, that's best, and then sear it again and go through the oven. My favorite way is actually to cook it sous vide. If you're not familiar with sous vide cooking, I'm doing a video in a few weeks that will explain much more about it and how you have to get a sous vide machine. It's an incredible way of cooking. It really is. But just to sort of, in a nutshell, uh, when we have a steak, you go to a steakhouse and you say, I want a steak medium rare. And they'll tell you that's going to be pink in the middle and then it goes medium rare, medium well, medium, medium well, and so on, you know. Out. So when you look at the steak, it's actually just pink in the middle. But if we know the temperature of medium rare, we can set a bath of water at that temperature. We then take the steak, put it into a bag, and then suck out the air under vacuum, sous vide, drop it into the water bath. And then over a period of time, about two hours for this, the warmth of the water will warm the steak to that temperature. In this case, I'm doing it to 131 degrees. Then I can take it out. I have a soggy piece of meat then, but then I'd paper towel dry it, and then we do a really nice sear. I'll show you. Chimichurri sauce is the perfect accompaniment to the cowboy ribeye steak. And it really frustrates me when I see recipes where you put it in the blender, you put it in the food processor, and you mash that parsley up. 
the most important thing with the chimichurri is to get the texture so you can start off by chopping the parsley chop it but give it some texture we don't want it really really fine but we don't want it in big chunky pieces either so just lightly run a knife through it once you chop the parsley rough chop the parsley you can then add some garlic some chili pepper some dried oregano salt olive oil and red wine vinegar stir all of those around oh it smells lovely with that garlic and the red wine vinegar and it looks so pretty you know the green and from the parsley and the red chili Stir all of those around and let the flavors infuse for about an hour and a half, which is how long it's going to take for my steak to cook. My steak's been in the sous vide now for about two hours. So now it's time to cook the Brussels sprouts and get my cast iron pan on the stove ready to sear the steak. Brussels sprouts get a really bad rap. And when I was growing up in England, 20, 30 years ago, they used to cook Brussels sprouts until they were just mushy and would fall apart. But that was the old days. I mean, Brussels sprouts are so healthy and so good for you. They're anti-carcinogen. That means they help fight cancer. We mix them with a little onion and garlic and bacon. I mean, seriously, anything that's got those in them is gonna be good anyway. And these are the best Brussels sprouts ever. I start off by rendering the bacon in the pan. And I don't need any fat or anything else in there because the fat from the bacon renders down and cooks it till it's nice and crispy. Once the bacon goes really crispy, then I can add the onion. And I've got some red onion to stir into that. and then the garlic. And now the Brussels sprouts. Once the Brussels sprouts are in, I'm going to add a little olive oil and some salt and pepper. I want to saute the Brussels sprouts until they're nice and tender, but I don't want to overcook them. If they go too mushy, then they lose all the nutrients and all their flavor, and they lose the color too. Right now we've got this vibrant green that's going to look gorgeous underneath the steak. The Brussels sprouts with the bacon, the onion, the garlic, it's a fabulous side dish, especially for Thanksgiving coming up. The recipes in my book, The Royal Chef at Home, I put a link to it below if you want to order a copy. I can now take the steak out of the sous vide machine. And look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Carefully going to slit the bag and take the steak out. That is what a sous vide cowboy ribeye steak looks like. A little paper towel just to dry this. Once the steak comes out of the sous vide, we've taken it out of the bag and dried it with paper towel. And what I have now is a soggy piece of beef, but it's cooked perfectly medium rare. Think of uh, chicken soup and chicken on the grill. When you taste chicken soup, the chicken is just chicken. But when it's on the grill, you have that beautiful caramelization. And that is what we're going to do next. It's called the Maillard reaction. Everything sounds better in French. The Maillard reaction is the caramelization of the protein. And that's where we go into a super hot skillet 
where we can sear both sides of the steak. My pan's smoking and I'm ready to sear the steak. I'm using corn oil, so you need uh, corn oil, vegetable oil, something with a high flash point. Olive oil's no good for this. It'll really smoke and burst into flames. So a little oil in the pan and I'll swish that around. I'm even gonna increase the heat a little bit more. <clears throat> then I'll take my steak and it goes in the pan. And I'm going to push down on it to help with the sear. Then I can carefully turn it over. Oh my gosh, look at that, it's gorgeous. Just a minute on each side, doesn't need any longer than that. And time for plating. My gorgeous ribeye steak, nicely seared, sous vide for two hours, and my Brussels sprouts with the bacon, onion and garlic, and this delicious chimichurri sauce. It's time for plating, the best part. Let's take the steak and have a look inside. Absolutely gorgeous. So tender and moist. The cowboy ribeye feeds two people. So we actually slice the steak across the grain now into thin slices, like a bistecca fiorentina uh, over in Italy. Take off the bone first. Just cut right the way down the bone and any extra meat that's on there. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, and then we'll slice the meat. I mean, isn't that just gorgeous? My Brussels sprouts with bacon and onion I can put on the bottom. And then carefully my beef on the top. All that's left is a little of the chimichurri sauce over the top of the steak. Absolutely gorgeous. And finally, the best part, the tasting. Oh, I've waited hours for this. Look at this gorgeous beef. I mean, oh. Mm. It's so tender. The flavors in there, the chimichurri sauce, absolutely incredible. The Brussels sprouts, amazing texture. You can see why the cowboy steak is really, really popular in steak houses all over the country. But it's not to be confused with tomahawk steak. Now, tomahawk steak is the same thing. It's the ribeye, really, really thick, but it has like another six inches of bone and it looks like, you know, the tomahawk axe. You can order the tomahawk, it's almost twice the price and, you know, the photo of it looks great on Instagram, you get a hundred likes, but what you're paying for those likes, this is exactly the same steak and it's absolutely amazing. The flavor comes from cooking the meat on the bone. The bone? Where did the bone go? Winston! Oh my gosh, I didn't even see you take it. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click like, leave a comment below. I'll see you again soon.